So that double bond, actually, it's rigid. The things that go out this way, the things that go out this way, it's a planar molecule. It can't rotate. Okay, and I think I talked about this before because I talked about the cis and the trans isomers. Okay, so trans is kind of catty-cornered. Cis is on the same side. Okay, so let's see if we can see the substitution on the same side. The chlorine's on the same side. Cis, okay, one, two, dichloroethane on the trans, okay. That's the uh, over there on the right. Now let's check out symmetry before I kind of reveal their boiling point temperatures and all that. Um, oh, I know. Did I have a slide before that? Yeah. I don't know if that was symmetry was in there. I just saw it real quick and I wrote it down, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? This one? There. Did you go over that class? I mean, just now? Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. That's okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, yeah, that's really you're fine. Things in the corner from that. Okay, that's what we can watch. But that's a good point. The more symmetrical one, actually, we're going to see that it has the higher melting point temperature because they kind of fit close together. So, let's see what we got with regard to symmetry. Before I go to melting point, now I remember, I want to go to boiling point. And this is, this, this might blow your mind. But, one of the things we've talked about in here is about um, polar or nonpolar substances. Why is this one over here nonpolar? Why is this trans one nonpolar? Yes, I think if it is planar, and it is planar, okay, yeah, if this is highly negative, highly negative, the center of negativeness is right here, okay, and it's coincides with the center of positiveness, so our centers of negatives and positives coincide. So that makes this thing nonpolar. Okay, if this is nonpolar, which one, and this is polar, which one should have the higher boiling point temperature? Polar. The polar one should have the higher boiling point temperature. Exactly, and it does. You got it. So the polar one has a higher boiling point temperature. Now let's go on to the melting point temperature. Um, I already said it's kind of bass backwards or kind of turned around. Make sure I get this right. I think I think I got this right. Well, it's symmetry. So this one I could put a mirror here and I have same, 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 same. Now for this one. I could put a, not necessarily a mirror, but I could point a, put a point here and check out on either side of the point. I have same, same, I'll change my colors, same, same, and same, same. So we have a plane of symmetry or a point of symmetry, basically. And as it turns out, this is more symmetrical. And since it's more symmetrical, it more tightly packs together, and that gives it the higher melting point temperature. So if you're like me, the whole, the whole negative temperature just drives me nuts, okay? If we just turned, went to Kelvin, then we wouldn't have to figure, figure out this. But can you see where um, negative 50 is greater than negative 80.5. So the higher <coughs> melting point temperature has to do with this being more symmetric. Okay. Now on a test, I'm not going to push it to that because I think that's hard to see right now. It's hard for me to explain. But it's more symmetric than this guy. All right. Cool. So this um, actually just looks at alkanes. We know that um, you can have methane, one carbon, um, ethane, two carbons, propane, three carbons, butane, four carbons, okay, all singly bonded to, and hydrogens kind of filling out their, um, their valences. So we talked about the boiling point temperature increases as you increase carbons, and so also does the melting point temperature.
All right. So just a couple slides on those amorphous solids. We did a lot of slides on the crystalline solids. So this goes back to here. Okay. Um, and we said that um, plastic was an example of an amorphous solid. So they're kind of a mixed match of kind of gloobity glop sort of stuff. It's funny how sometimes things look like gloobity glop, but it's really kind of ordered. Okay, but amorphous is really, okay. And so, um, not so surprising then, it kind of uh, varies with regard to melting point temperature, and also when it breaks, it's going to be kind of randomly, randomly break. So here's an example of uh, glass. Glass just kind of has random amounts, I think, I guess, of silicon and oxygen, but it's an amorphous solid. What was that on the last slide, that second sentence? Sorry. You're fine. Do not know a specific nature. Yeah. So that's not a good slide to end on, because that's bad luck. <laughs> <laughs> We're okay with that. <laughs> I just want to say, that little video of the ice versus the water molecules, now I understand why I 